The Beretta 92 is a semi-automatic 9mm pistol invented in 1972. The 92 was made to be a duty pistol for the police and military and was the US military sidearm for quite some time. And there's a lot of things you probably know about the Beretta 92, but what we're going to talk about is we're going to talk about 10 things you probably didn't know about the Beretta 92. Number one, there are 28 different variants of the Beretta 92. Some of my favorites are the variants with the heavier slides, which gives you less recoil and faster follow-up shots. But my all-time favorite, which I'd love to get a hold of, is the 93R, which is designed with a selector switch for a three-round burst. Number two. In 1974, a large contract for Beretta 92s was put out by the Brazilian Army. And this was the first major contract by a military force for the Beretta 92. And at this point, public production had not yet begun, so Beretta built a factory in Sao Paulo, Brazil. And in 1980, Beretta sold the factory to Brazilian gunmaker Taurus, who then began mass production of the Taurus PT-92 with Beretta machinery. Number three, 46 countries use the Beretta 92 as their military and police sidearm, including the U.S., which used the 92 version of the M9 which replaced the 1911A1 in 1985 but entered full service in 1990. Number four, during these U.S. military trials, they went against powerhouses like the Colt SSP, the FN High Power, the HK P7, the Sig Sauer P226, the Smith & Wesson 459, the Steyr GB, and the Walther P88. And it finally came down to two, the Beretta 92 or the Sig 226. Both those are great handguns. Number five, early and in initial uses by the Navy SEALs reported slide separation, and this caused some facial injuries. And Beretta had a two-part response to this. First, they sued the Department of the Navy because of the SEAL team leaking information on this problem, and two, they installed an oversized hammer pin head to eliminate the problem, which they say was due to overpressured ammo. Number six, in 2006, the Center for Naval Analysis conducted a survey of 2,608 troops returning from combat in Iraq and Afghanistan. Of these, 161 were armed with and used in battle the Beretta 92M9. Of these results, 48% were dissatisfied with its performance, 76% were satisfied with the accuracy, 66% were satisfied with range, 88% satisfied with rate of fire, 26% reported failures, 45% reported failures of the magazine, 83% needed no repairs while they're at war, 46% were not confident in it, and 26% desired heavier calibers for better stopping power. Number seven. Shortly after this, in 2007, another controversy surrounded the U.S. military for not using Beretta magazines, but instead used the Airtronic USA magazine, which led to a lot of the battle time problems that the Beretta 92 had. Number eight, in 2007, the U.S. Marine Corps changed their sidearm and required that all enlisted and officers below the rank of colonel would no longer be issued the Beretta 92 M9s as their sidearm, but be issued M4 carbines instead. And this goes along with the idea that every Marine is a rifleman. Number nine, the Beretta 92 has been a prop gun in over 1,000 movies and 600 television shows. The earliest I recall seeing this gun in a movie was Lethal Weapon, and among some of my favorites would be Die Hard, The Matrix, and The Walking Dead. And finally, number 10. The Turkish company Gerson produced the Yava 16, which is an identical copy of the Beretta 92 imported into the U.S. as American Tactical 92, or AT-92. The Yava 16 was exported to Canada, Colombia, Georgia, Malaysia, and Syria, and you may already know that, but what you may not know is that speculation has surrounded this particular production in that these pistols were under contract from Beretta having some financial profit from the sales of the Yava 16, which makes me wonder more about the Brazilian factory. So there you go. There's my top 10 things you probably didn't know about the Beretta 92. There's probably a bunch you also know. If you have any, comment below. If you like this video, click like and subscribe. You can also now be a patron of this channel and our Patreon link is below. 
but by far the most important part of this YouTube channel is it's a ministry to us and we take prayer requests. So please don't ever hesitate to send that stuff in. Thank you for watching this episode of God, Family, and Guns. And as always, love God, love your family, and love guns.